is upon us for the SEC men's basketball tournament here in Tampa Bay. I want to welcome you to the Game Day Everyday podcast. I am Ryan Bass. That is Rob Higgins, of course, the executive director of the Tampa Bay Sports Commission. Buddy, for the first time in 11 years, 11 is my lucky number, by the way, we've got the SEC men's basketball tournament back in town. Finally. What's crazy is we were awarded this event in May of 2014, so nearly eight years in the making. We've been going to Nashville, went to St. Louis. We've taken a lot of notes and pictures and learned a lot of lessons, and it's finally here. It's execution time. A lot of our good friends at the SEC landed last night after they were in Nashville for the SEC Women's Basketball Tournament. Yeah, jam-packed full of meetings here uh, the rest of the way. Teams will start arriving, a lot going on, a lot to cover off on on this podcast. But the biggest news is that my co-host here is apparently now a social media influencer. I mean, I oh, see you know throwing that? out promo codes on Instagram now. I mean, you are big time. You do one game day every day podcast, and now you got products wanting to be endorsed by you. It's crazy. It's, I mean, truly, my profile has been boosted by being a part of the uh, Game Day Everyday podcast in the Tampa Bay Sports Commission. And with that, you know, Liquid IV is, is a great product here that, that we're using. By the way, live from Las Vegas here, beautiful Sin City. I'm scouting out the Pac-12 tournament, just so you know. Like, I came here specifically wow. to scout out the scene for the Pac-12 tournament here at the MGM Grand. So I want to let you know, I'm putting in the hard work. Liquid IV is certainly assisting with that. But, Rob, that is not it. I've got some joggers that are coming in the mail, buddy. Wait till you see some joggers on the Instagram. They're coming soon. And I'll get you a pair, too, if you want some. I mean, I don't know who's a bigger influencer between you or our boy Alex Killarn. I mean, hashtag influencer, <laughs> hashtag ad, hashtag partner. I mean, you've got it all going, big timer. I, I love it. I love it. Look, if I could be in the same conversation as Alex Killarn, I take that as the highest compliment in the land. Uh, that is certainly for sure. Uh, it, this is awesome, man, to, to have the SEC tournament in town. And I feel like they're following me, by the way, coming from Nashville to Tampa. Like, why is everybody following what I'm doing? It's totally cool. Like, I get it. Like, you know, I started a trend. It's, it's all good. But, Rob, take me through why it is in Tampa right now, because this is a tournament that is basically housed at Bridgestone Arena in Nashville, Tennessee, taking a one year hiatus to come down here to Tampa Bay. So explain to me the process of what went into getting that game here in this 2022 season and why it's coming to Tampa for this one year hiatus. Sure. I actually think they came to Tampa because you then had moved to Nashville. So I think they were running from you, not actually following you. So Makes it sense. worked out perfect for us. No, I, I think, you know, we really have always loved the relationship with the SEC in 2009, getting a chance to host uh, the tournament back then. It led to continued conversations about the next possible time we may be able to host. And at that time, they really were looking at a model of uh, hosting the the event in Nashville for three years and then taking it out uh, for an out year. And so uh, at that point in time, they were looking at 2018 and 2022 specifically, and they went to St. Louis in, in 2018 and are now coming to us in, in 2022. There's no doubt uh, that Nashville is a, a special place to host the SEC men's basketball tournament with so many schools in close proximity. It, it makes a ton of sense. Um, but we, we see this as a really unique opportunity that we're going to try to capitalize on. Who knows where it will lead for us in terms of future events, because the men's basketball tournament is going to be in Nashville for, for quite some time. But the SEC has got a lot of great championships. So we're going to try to do everything we can to uh, to make sure it goes off without a hitch. And you can always already see the, the banners going up now. The street pole banners went up this past weekend. The airport signage went up the hotel signage is going up as we speak we're going to roll out the red carpet uh for the fans and make sure they have a fantastic experience then we'll see what the future holds for us down the down the line and as as i know because uh, you all do it time and time again uh you know every single time there is an event in town it's why our tagline and our podcast name is game day every day that is how you all approach work and that is why uh all these games and all these events love coming to our beautiful area in tampa bay games by the way get started this wednesday they close on march 13th on sunday for the sec championship game we've got the top seeds by the way that have been announced so the tournament uh bracket has finally been announced the top seeds are number one auburn number two tennessee number three kentucky and number four arkansas those teams get a double buy by the way so the first two rounds march 9th and march 10th you won't see those teams but what you will see is the florida gators that are going to be here in town as well and I found this very interesting, Rob. 
This has been an interesting year in terms of home teams winning in the SEC this year. I mean, they've been exceptional. Auburn went 16-0 at, at Auburn Arena this year. Runner-up Tennessee went 16-0 at their home arena. Kentucky went 18-0 at Rupp Arena. That's according to ESPN Stats and Info. The first time since 58-59, the top three finishers in the league all went unbeaten at home. But now they go on the road, essentially, here. Because it's not Nashville, which can be kind of a semi-home game for some of those schools. Now they come down here to Tampa. It's fair game, man. Anybody can win this tournament here in Tampa coming up. Yeah, I mean, you look at this league, top to bottom, everybody's got a chance. Out of the 14 teams, seven of them have been ranked. Five are ranked right now. You've got some some teams with a really legitimate chance uh, to, to make the Final Four or protect, perhaps win the national championship and to think about, you know, that road uh, to March Madness starts right here at Emily Arena is special. Uh, the Wednesday night games are going to be phenomenal. Uh, so, some great matchups there with uh, Ole Miss taking on Missouri and then Georgia taking on Vandy. And then you roll in to, to Thursday, like you said, the Gators, Texas A&M, uh, and so many others taking on um, some great opponents. So we are fired up. It's going to be awesome. And we've got a couple of great special guests on with us here today uh, who are going to have unique perspectives. First, we've got Seth Greenberg. A lot of people don't realize uh, when I was in college, I was a men's uh, basketball manager for the team. And Seth Greenberg was the head coach for four of those years. And so it's going to be great to catch up with him. And then we also have the associate commissioner from the SEC, Dan Leibovitz, uh, who's really their point when it comes uh, to everything men's basketball. And so to hear his perspective and be able to sit down with him, it's going to be phenomenal as well. So I'm fired up, Ryan. If you can't tell, we've got a couple of great guests here today. I just can't wait to ask Seth what you were like as a basketball team manager, because if it's anything like how you are as the executive director of the Tampa Bay Sports Commission, every single detail matters. And I'm curious if when you were wiping off those basketballs, that not a single bead of sweat was left on those basketballs as the team manager. So we're going to ask Seth Greenberg, how Mr. Rob Higgins was as a team manager, and also, of course, get a preview of this week's SEC Men's Basketball Tournament. Well, we're joined by an absolute legend. I think a lot of the Tampa listeners here will remember him, but certainly the national listeners do as well. Uh, ESPN's Seth Greenberg. His real claim to fame, though, is the fact that he was the head coach of USF when I was the equipment manager for four years so he knows where all the bodies are buried when it comes to to Higgins and and, and here's the thing is you guys are gonna get to understand when he says Higgy he's the only person that still calls me that <laughs> he's allowed to call me that so coach it's great to catch up with you here welcome to the game day everyday podcast Higgy it's great to be there do I have to call you Sir Higgins Mr. Higgins uh, no I like that executive Higgy. director Higgins I mean I mean I mean is there a proper title like, the, the crazy thing about this whole thing is I get the South Florida job Joan Snyder's like the secretary who you know Joan never got too excited about anything she goes coach your manager here and uh that was Higgy but little did I know he was still in high school he was running the whole show the whole show and all of a sudden I said, well, what year are you? And he said, a senior. And I, you saw my Higgy looks like he's a senior in high school now. He had a little <laughs> senior you know, back then. And uh, sure enough, he took care of us the best of the best. And we always say, you know, like the managers are taking over the world. Higgy, he's close to taking over the world. Yeah, right. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Right. I'll, I'll never forget, though, that it's a great story. It was literally, uh, it was a, probably a month or two after that you had gotten the job and um and you had said to me hey what's your plan I said well I'm I'm, I'm graduating like um and uh he said so we're losing I said no you got me for four more years <laughs> graduating high school <laughs> I still have four more years of this and we had some some great times I mean the, the road trips and the, the players and and everything I mean I just look back with on it with with so much fondness and I know one of the other ones was Greenberg Opolis. I mean, this guy was so passionate about <laughs> getting fans in the stands. We literally created a tent village outside of the Sunday. And coach would bring pizzas uh, to all the students that were camping out. 
Oh, and three me of them. Michael Kelly, who's the AD now at South Florida, would be out there handing out wristbands at four o'clock in the morning for people to be able to get in the student section. It was just such a great time. Michael and I talk about that all the time. Uh, Coach, what were some of your favorite memories from the South Florida days? Yeah, I mean, Greenbergopolis, that was right. We started right before the Florida game, if I'm not mistaken. Dickie right. was actually doing that game. Um, it was it, it was an event. It wasn't a game. It was an event. Obviously, when Coach Vital is doing a game on a Saturday, it becomes a little bit bigger. Um, and our prayers are with him, and as he's obviously has a big week this week. But, you know, I think the biggest thing is that, uh, you know, the idea of rebuilding uh, or, or building the program at South Florida, uh, you know, it was a little harder than I thought it would be. Uh, to be honest with you, and figuring it out. But we have so many good memories. I mean, I think about the Nebraska game. Reggie, you know, people talk about logo range. Reggie Cohen knocked one in from the from from the parking lot. Uh, getting calls from Mr. Steinberg and make sure his parking pass was there was it was always a big one. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> My first so, meeting with Mr. Steinbrenner when when I went over to the stadium because I wanted to get our guys summer jobs. And, you know, I, I haven't been nervous too many times in my life, but I remember sitting downstairs waiting to go up and get invited up to his office. You know, I, I don't know what I said when I met him. I was, I was doing some mumbling. I mean, it was, it was, it was hilarious. And then we went out to Malio's for lunch and then it, we actually, he became a great mentor to me. Uh, it's the people and the players. I mean, you know, really what it comes down to, I mean, like we had some good years we had some years where we, you know, we, we were a little disappointed, but, you know, we thought we were building some energy and momentum and, and doing some good things. But I mean, we had really good players, you know, B.B. Walden, Alton Jackson, Reggie Cohn. I mean, we had, uh, you know, Brian Lamb, look at the success he's had. Look at Andrew Frazier and the success he's had. Look at Chauncey Ansbury. And you know what the, the biggest thing though, Higgy, is, is like, I'm as close to two guys that left campus than guys that stayed on campus. Like, you know, I communicate all the time with Haven Jackson now and, and, and Raheem Brown. And, and like you say, what is those guys transferred yet? You know, as you know, you have a certain relationship when you're a recruited player, you have a certain relationship when you coach a player. And then, you know, there's that next phase of that relationship, uh, you know, and, uh, and those are things that I, I'm really proud of. But I thought we, I thought we, had, we had a really good foundation um, I probably would have tried to go outside the box in terms of recruiting a little outside the state to have a couple of guys to complement those really hard play and really tough minded athletes that we had, but uh, great, great years. I mean, my, my, my daughters, you know, kind of their early years grew up there and uh, we have really long lasting friends that are still in Tampa. And uh, we think of Tampa and, and South Florida you know, really fondly. You had the house with the red door in Tampa Palms. I'll never, <laughs> I'll never forget it. Big red door. Uh, I mean, it was all part of the whole thing. I mean, I get coached those Caribbean way smoothies at Smoothie King. He's a big Gladstones guy, which is no longer there. Manhattan Bagel with our guy Bagel Boy. John right. That's right. <laughs> I, I'll tell you. I mean, the, the, the bromance between you two is 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 incredible. Um, but I will say, I mean, look. From this UCF alum, I think it's time that we get off the USF Bulls topic, if that's okay. We could, we could step aside from that. No, but there were there were tournament games that were obviously held on USF's campus. Now, of course, uh, held in bigger venues. This week, we've got the SEC men's basketball tournament here in Tampa. Seth, I'm just curious in terms of these top three seeds, Auburn, Kentucky, uh, and, and Tennessee, they're all undefeated at home this year. Obviously, on the road's a little bit of a different story. Anything goes when you, when you go to a neutral site like Tampa. So, you know, in your opinion, obviously, Auburn is the – the SEC regular season champ, but who's your favorite heading into this thing? You know, it, it's really interesting. I think that you look at it, there's four teams, total of one road loss, a uh, home loss, if you include, include Arkansas in there, who's playing as well as any team in, in the conference. You know, they had a tough loss the other day at Tennessee. Tennessee's absolutely brutal, you know, to play against. I think Kentucky right now would be, if I had to pick one team, uh, I'd probably say Kentucky because of the versatility, even with their injuries. I mean, you think about the wins they had with guys missing when they had Ty Ty Washington missing when they had Savir missing. Uh, you know, to me, that's the key. And then they have one guy who's different. Like Oscar Sheba is going to be player of the year. You know I mean, he's going to play of the year because he's earned it. He didn't come in as a player of the year candidate. What he did was he went out each and every day and basically he rebounded balls in his area, out of his area. If his teammates were trying to rebound him, it made no difference. He was going to get that rebound. And then he's really improved offensively. I mean, like now they're playing through him in the block where he's ducking in, he's catching, he's finishing. 
uh, short rolling. He's knocking down that foul line jumper. But the pieces fit when I think about Kentucky. Uh, Ty Ty Washington gives him a ball guard who can make plays. Savir is basically the creator. Kellen knocks down big shots. They got the two-headed monster in Toppin and, and Keon Brooks, and then they're developing depth around that with DVR Mintz. But any of those four teams can, can not only win that tournament, but make a deep run. And I think I, I actually, it, it's absolutely terrific that the SEC tournament is in, in, in Tampa. I mean, I think it's terrific. I, I, I coached in the, SC, in the ACC tournament when it was in Tampa a while back, actually. I'm sitting on a chair to, at Higgy that you sent me right there from the ACC tournament. <laughs> I'll send you one that. this week as well, Coach. I'll autograph I appreciate it. it. I need to get it around all <laughs> around the table. So that, that, that would be good. Uh, but it's going to be a great event. Like the Big Blue Nation is going to come and show up. Auburn's people are going to come and show up. The Gators are going to come and show up. The environment, the atmosphere, the energy is going to be terrific. It's going to be so good for the community because it's a one, it's a destination, which is so important. Uh, <clears throat> number two is it's a great venue. And you know, basketball is important in the state now. I mean, it really is. And I think it's uh, it's going to be really good for the SEC. And I think it's going to be an incredible, incredible tournament with, you know, you talk about those four teams. I mean, any of those four teams can win it. But I mean, like there are teams that are, there are other teams in the league that, you know, are playing well or dangerous. I mean, it cra crazy it sounds like Mississippi State. I mean, they got you know, one of the best point guards in the league or ball guards in the league there, Garrison Brooks. They, you know, they've got guys that can put pressure on you defensively. Florida is going to be a dangerous team playing at home, uh, play with great entry. I love Druji. I think he's terrific. Appleby's playing his best basketball all season. Castleton gives him an inside score that has good energy. So, I mean, you know, Scotty Pippen at, at Vanderbilt's going to be fun to watch. I mean, he's just a dynamic a guard as there is in the country uh, who could take over a game. So I just think there are a lot of good teams in the league. I think the games are going to be terrific. We're going to be in, in New York. I think a lot of our staff would like to be in Tampa. <laughs> What's one uh, coaching matchup? Because I want to talk a little bit with you uh, about coaching and broadcasting, but what is one – coaching matchup you'd be really interested to see shake out in this bracket you know obviously look uh i think there's a bunch of them i think that you know obviously anytime bruce plays against cal it's an event it's an event look they both respect each other but they both get in underneath each other's skin it's you know it's, it's no secret so that would be you know that would be interesting they would meet in the finals if that happened that would be great for espn because it would be a great rating it would be great for Tampa, obviously, because people would stick around. So, you know, the economy would boost. But, you know, I, I think the Tennessee-Kentucky game would be a great matchup. You know, Barnsley and, 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 and Cal, uh, Tennessee's defending about as well as anyone. Tennessee at Tennessee got up underneath Kentucky and really pushed their offense out, made, made it almost impossible to run offense. Uh, I think that would be an interesting one. And, you know, hey, Arkansas and what Eric Musselman's done is incredible. The one interesting one, though, early on, Alabama wins and they get Kentucky. Alabama, because how fast they play, if they're making shots, when Javon Quinterly is finding a balance between attacking and, and scoring, Shackelford gets it going. Bediaco obviously has the length to maybe bother Shibway a little bit. Ellis is kind of the X factor that maybe can shut down Kellen Grady. I mean, that's going to be a hard game. If that, if that game materialized, that's going to be a hard game for Kentucky. You try to beat a team three times in one year, that's not easy. So the tournament will have great drama. The sleeper team may be LSU. They may not be able to shoot it straight, but they can surely guard it. And Tari Eason is really, really tough matchup. With Pinson in the game, they're a little bit different. Uh, they're, they're, a danger, they're a dangerous team because uh, of what how disruptive they can be defensively. Like if I was living in Tampa, what I would do is if I could get a ticket, I'd show up on March 10th. I would, I, I would have a nice lunch, put my feet up, and watch ball all day because it's an all-day event. And, and, you know, I think right through the tournament, you're not going to have a bad game. Sounds like our old staff games. Where that was kind of the scouting report on me. It was like, <laughs> can't shoot it straight, but he can guard the heck out of you. Like, that's, a, that's a great thing about great, me. Great toughness. But you, you just ran Higgies right down to the block and just back to me. I know it's co coach. I need a scouting report on, on a young Rob Higgins. Like, what, what was he a gritty, like, 
three and D defender? Like, what was a young Rob Higgins? Ryan, I was washing player? the players' clothes. I was guarding <laughs> nobody. Sometimes they give me a pad to lean into guys in the post, and I get knocked. That didn't out. last very long. Imagine Higgy yeah. leaning. In. Imagine Higgy leaning in on like you know uh, Will McDonald. I mean, like they go <laughs> that far. But what Higgy was and what he is today, and what we're so proud of him, he's more organized than Crocs. I mean, and he has the ability, and, and I'm not saying Rob anything you don't have said to you, you know, privately is he has a rare ability to connect with people and make the person that he's talking to feel like they're the most important person in the room and and basically develop relationships. And we know life is about relationships and trust. And you know, I always say three my, my three pillars are people, relationships, trust. Find good people, develop real relationships so you can earn trust and you know, I'm not embarrassed. He does that as well as anyway. And that's why, obviously, you know, you guys are doing so amazingly well. <clears throat> Besides it being a great destination, uh, bringing incredible events to, to Tampa Bay. Thank you, Coach. And I would just wrap with a, a quick question um, from your end. And I'll, I'll share in the bromance. Because, you know, the transition you've had from, from coaching and now what you do, today on, on ESPN and the, the way you break down, you've, we've heard it in the last 10 minutes, the way you break down teams and players that I think fans have really gravitated towards that. How, how have you enjoyed, I think behind the scenes, we always knew if you ever went to TV, you were going to excel at a really high level and you've proved us right on that. Uh, and I know there's a ton of preparation. People never get a chance to see, but uh, you've poured so much into it and been so successful at it. What it's, what's it been like for you? Hey, look, I, I work for an amazing organization. And I say it's probably been the best team I've ever been part of in terms of everyone is pulling in the same direction. Uh, you know, and all they want you to do is have a good show. Whether it's the APs, whether it's the researchers, whether it's directors, whether it's producers, their whole goal is to make you look good. And, uh, to me, there's you know there's not an AD that has an agenda or a financial you know a fundraiser that has an agenda. I mean, literally, there's one focus. All right, we got this halftime. Let's make it really really special. And these are really talented people. Or you know we have game day show. We got one hour. How can we make it its very best? So for me, it, it's you literally have no one pulling in another direction. Uh, it's been great. I mean, look, I, you know I get the best seat in the house for the best games. Uh, I still get to do what I love and that's talk about ball. Do I miss coaching? Yeah, I'm not gonna say or lie to you. I, I miss coaching. I miss, you know, I miss having a chance to impact someone besides a gambler. <laughs> I, 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 miss, I, miss, I miss seeing guys grow up and, you know, become husbands and fathers and, and successful outside of that world. And, you know, that's kind of one of the things that, you know, I've spent even more time connecting with in the last 10 years, especially during the pandemic. We had one, we had one Zoom call, we had 70 or 80 former players on, on the call, which was a really cool thing. Um, but yeah, you missed the competition, you missed where they could put together a plan. Now, you know, now what I do, I can actually, after the day, I can taste my food and actually digest it and actually, actually really I digest it. Uh, you know, I sleep a little bit better, not a whole lot better, but I, I sleep a little bit better. Uh, and, you know, it, it's rewarding, but it's not coaching. Coaching is something that's, uh, you know, winning and losing, even the losing, it, it kind of invigorates you, certainly. But, uh, but I've got a great gig, and I work with amazing, amazing people. I really do, that are really talented and really passionate about what they do. Coach, it was fantastic to catch up. Uh, you've been such a great mentor over the years. You've taught us so much. Uh, over the years and we just love tuning in and, and seeing you uh, do such a fantastic job on, on the TV each and every week and we appreciate you joining the podcast today please tell Karen and Paige and Jackie and Ellen the whole group uh, that I said hello appreciate it Rob appreciate it and uh, hey, have a great week I mean this is going to be a blast of a week for you guys uh, and uh, there are great restaurants downtown and I'm sure there's still great restaurants downtown you need some plots still up Yep, Mesa's right. still up. We've got Malios, we've got Burns, and we've got coaches from the SEC calling for reservations to all of them. And we're going to make sure they uh, they get, <laughs> in and get their fair share of a taste of Tampa Bay. That'll be good. Well, enjoy. Have a great week. Have a great championship.
Good to have Seth Greenberg joining us. You know, of course, there had to be a little uh, USF influence on this podcast because, uh, of course, there had to be, right? You guys are cornering me with all the Bulls talk here, but that's okay. Totally fine. Good to have Seth on. Good to preview the uh, SEC men's basketball tournament. Rob, just talking with Seth, I'm just so pumped to see some really quality teams here. As you mentioned, I mean, there's, these are some of the best basketball programs in the entire country. Potential national championship winning programs that are going to be playing in Tampa this week. It's going to be fun to see it all go down at Annalee Arena. Yeah, there's a lot of conference basketball tournaments, of course, going to go on this week throughout the country. I- I'm biased, but I think I would put this one right at the top of the list. Some fantastic storylines, uh, some great programs. I think you heard it from Seth, just how excited he is uh, about the actions that's going to take place in Emily Arena. So I think the fans are in for a real treat. When you talk about the fans, not only the locals that are going to come out to the event who haven't had an opportunity to watch postseason men's basketball, since 2011 and then the visitors uh, for these great programs these visiting fans that support these teams so well and are going to help pack Amelie arena as well it's just the convergence of both both worlds and, and we're pumped it's going to be awesome it's going to be really really cool and rob prior to games getting started you had an opportunity to chat with one of our good friends didn't you i did uh dan Leibovitz, uh is the the lead for for men's basketball with the the sec uh, he does just a, an awesome job, and they have been fantastic partners throughout this in, entire process. Their entire team, you know, whether it be Corey or Ali, um, John Williams, they have this great staff that is just such a fun group to be able to work with. And 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 really, Dan Hope uh, leads that from the conference side of things. So let's listen to Dan's perspective as we gear up here for the 2022 SEC men's basketball tournament. All right, we're here with Dan Leibovitz, Associate Commissioner for the SEC. The big week is finally upon us. What do you think, Dan? Really excited. It's going to be an incredible week of basketball. It's been a historic season, a regular season in the SEC, which is some of the competitive matchups we have. Outstanding coaches, incredible student athletes. Uh, it'll be a big time event. Before we get too far into the actual tournament this week, I want to talk a little bit about Dan's background. He's a former coach. We had Seth Greenberg on this episode as well and talked about that transition from from coaching to broadcasting for Seth, but this is coaching to administration for Dan. How's that been for you, Dan? Mostly good. Uh, you know, it's it's a it's an interesting role. Uh, I think I looked for a, l- a couple different positions after coaching. And I kept hearing from certain people that uh, you seem great, but all you've ever done was coach. And this conference office gig is the first one where they said, we think it's great that you've coached because you can relate to our coaches. So it's been a good uh, fit for me. We have some uh, big personalities in our coaching staff in the SEC and our 14. And uh, we have some candid conversations uh, back and forth. And I think the fact that I've sat in those, not at this level, but been a head coach that they understand that I know what they're going through and the pressures and the, the will to win is great. And a lot of the frustration uh, I can appreciate at times. I'll tell you, one of the biggest common threads with both coaching and administration in your position is the priority on the student athlete experience. I know the SEC invests so much and has such an emphasis on the student athlete experience. As we're standing in Amelie Arena today and everything's getting set up, you can hear everything literally getting set up now. How important is that student athlete experience from your position? It's everything. Uh, We don't exist clearly without our student athletes and all the moments and all the memories come from the floor and the field and uh, they're so important to us. And when they walk in this building in Amelie, we want to make sure that uh, second they get off the bus to the second they leave, everything in here is first class. The look, the feel, the sound, which is what you're, you know, you're hearing uh, get put in place right now. Uh, it's all about the student-athlete experience for us. Now you guys have had some incredible games already during the regular season. We know we're, we're destined for some epic matchups here today as well. But the success of the SEC, specifically in basketball, isn't by accident. It's actually by design. And over these last five or six years, and you've been a big part of it, um, how has the conference focused on making sure that you're also known as a men's basketball league in addition to football and everything else that you, you've done so, so far? Definitely an emphasis. I always laugh a little bit when people say, you know, football conference, uh, 
and and then now men's basketball. But when you look at the SEC, as you mentioned, I mean, the, the Olympic sports, the baseball, the track and field, the swimming, golf. Uh, I think it was this summer in the Olympics, the SEC would have finished fourth if it was a country <laughs> in the medal count. So uh, it, it's a it's a high standard to live up to. And that started uh, really with Commissioner Sly. Before Commissioner Sankey, there was a point where uh, the SEC was getting three, four, five teams maybe in the, S S in the NCAA tournament. And uh, that wasn't good enough. It felt like there was a, a lot more we could accomplish. And Commissioner Sankey's really followed through on that. Hired Mike Trangese as a former Big East commissioner as a special advisor. Uh, soon thereafter, I came to the fold. Uh, we just have take. We still do. We look at everything that we do on a daily basis, and how can we just be a little bit better? Uh, but if you take a step back, it, it's not rocket science. We hired great coaches. So I don't hire them. We try to. And talk to schools at, at times about maybe what their coaching search process might be. But we've got really accomplished head coaches, and that brings big time student athletes. And just look at the NBA draft every year, it's, it's been recently kind of dominated by the SEC. The scheduling we've ramped up, talk about our in arena experience, our media relations. Every day I wake up and just try to think about what else we can do. For you guys, the, the proof is in the pudding. The, fact that seven of the 14 teams this year have been ranked in the top 25 you know five in this past week's poll as well you've got some legit national championship contenders and it's it's pretty special now we're here in tampa uh we last time we hosted was 2009 nashville has hosted six of the last seven years i think they're going to host for the foreseeable future but what do you sense from the league and the coaches and the teams about their excitement for having this one out year right here in uh, in our community very excited, and uh, I would say this whether I was talking to you or not. A lot of it starts with your name, and, and we say there's a gentleman named Rob Higgins, and, and he does an incredible job with events down here. They've done Super Bowls and Final Fours and CFPs, and weather's not bad either, but, but that's, that's a really – uh, not that we have to sell, but it's a really easy sell for us, and they're looking forward to it. Uh, Nashville's tremendous. Uh, this experience is going to be uh, something special, uh, so we're, we're thrilled. Well, thank you, Dan. We certainly appreciate the partnership. We are excited about this week. It's actually been almost eight years in the making. We were awarded this back in, in 2014. Uh, we certainly have had plenty of time to prepare, and we're looking forward to executing with your, you and your team and making sure we create memories that will last a lifetime for the student-athletes. So thanks so much for joining the Game Day Everyday podcast, and we look forward to a really special week. Thank you. Man, it's great catching up with Dan. Uh, we are in the foxhole with him and his team all week gearing up for what's going to be an epic 13 games that's for sure you know ryan we not only have you helping us out here with the podcast but we've got a great uh local historian of sorts a fantastic journalist joey johnston who has been writing awesome articles for tampa bay sports.org we call it team tampa bay's take and he's off to a fantastic start i don't know if you've had a chance to check him out yet but he's got a couple of great pieces already. Um, you know, he's talked about uh, a lot of the great March Madness moments throughout history. He's talked about just how the SEC's success this year is, isn't by accident, it's by design. And then he's given a great primer for the tournament. That's the third installment of Team Tampa Bay's take, which just went live today as well. So many great pieces. He's pumping out some great content. You got to just check out TampaBaySports.org. I'll tell you, man, you know, I was I was a little jealous at first, you know, when you brought brought Joey on because I'm like, man, I thought I was the favorite child here. Like I thought, you know, oh, man, I, I get the opportunity to join the roster. But there's always space for one of the goats of Tampa Bay journalism. And that would be Joey Johnston. What an addition he is to your team. What an excellent journalist and writer that he is. And I love the article where he kind of took us through some of the magical moments in Tampa Bay uh, hoops history. I had no idea that. In 1983, there was an early NCAA tournament game. It's played at the Sundome, which, of course, was USF's arena. Um, and then who knew that in 1999, we had a Final Four Tropicana Field here in Tampa Bay as well. Pretty cool looking back just to see kind of how the scene has changed. And obviously, this week's game is going to be at Amelie Arena. But when you look back, Rob, you've been here, obviously, your entire life. What, what's some of the, the memories that stick out to you in terms of NCAA basketball in town? There's been some great ones. I mean, that 98 regional at the Trop was was fantastic. Final Four uh, was in, incredible as well. To me, to the 2008 NCAA men's first and second rounds at Amway Arena was awesome because it was one of those things, you know, when you're putting on 
uh, first and second rounds, you, you almost when March, when the selection show comes out, that's when you almost are unwrapping the presents to see what you're getting in terms of teams. And at that point in time, selection show hits and you get these teams and you're like, mm, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. These aren't exactly the blue bloods. Of, uh, of college basketball. You're telling and me Drake isn't the blue blood of college basketball? We, we were rewarded with just epic upset after upset. No site had ever had four of those high seeds take down the, the lower seeds. And it was just an awesome day. We had buzzer beaters and we had, you know, so many great upsets. And I, and I think that's the beauty of March Madness. You don't know when the one shining moment's going to come. And back in 08, we had four uh, one shining moments happen. And now I think it points the segue to this week with the teams that we've got, the storyline we've got, I think we're destined for some unforgettable memories. If you love college hoops or love sports in general, it's one of those things you got to be there because something special is going to happen. No, oh, there's, there's no doubt. And, and look again, you know, you got your top seeds in, in Auburn, Tennessee, Kentucky, and, and Arkansas, but a team like LSU, who's right outside, who's number five in terms of seeding, can make some noise. Remember Florida. Florida needs to win some of these big games in order to try and snatch a, a, a you know a bid to the NCAA tournament. So they've got a lot to play for in this tournament as well. We're going to see upsets. We're going to see surprises. We're going to see it all go down at Amelie Arena. Again, game starting on Wednesday. That's the first round, finishing up with the SEC championship game on Sunday. Do we have any predictions from my friend Rob Higgins before we move on in terms of who could potentially be crowned the champions here in Tampa? No, I absolutely do not. I'm not, I'm not predicting anything. Um, I predict everybody's going to have a great time. And we do have a handful of tickets still available. Not a lot. We've got individual sessions still available. If you go on to secsports.com, there is low as $15 a session. They range depending on the session and the seat location uh, all the way up to 120 uh, but I can tell you we're down to just the last few because we're, we're expecting just an incredible atmosphere at Amelie Arena throughout the tournament. So if you don't have your tickets yet, you want to come check it out, log on to secsports.com and be a part of all this, these great memories. It's going to be a lot of fun. And I'll, I'll tell you, we're going to have an invasion of SEC Nation here to Tampa Bay, Kentucky, Auburn, Alabama, Florida, obviously going to be in town. I would venture to guess some people from Knoxville are going to come down and enjoy Tampa Bay as well. It's going to be a lot of fans just flushing and rushing into the Tampa Bay area. It's going to be really cool to see, and it's going to be a great atmosphere uh, this week and this weekend into the SEC tournament. Speaking of great atmospheres, Rob, I had an opportunity to, to be up in Nashville for the stadium series between the Lightning and the Predators last weekend, and what an unbelievable atmosphere that was. Just the, just the game aside, the buzz down on Broadway ahead of the game, the week, the teams, the atmosphere. Obviously, the broadcast was exceptional. They did it just like Nashville does with some big acts playing, obviously, there, uh, you know, on the field uh, with the game. Uh, Miranda Lambert put on an unbelievable performance as well. Stadium series talk about it coming to Tampa. What are the possibilities of that, Rob? Because I know there's a lot of interest in hopefully us kind of hosting a stadium series outdoor game for the first time ever. Yeah, there was a couple articles, Joe Smith uh, with the Athletic and then Ed Encina with the Tampa Bay Times both wrote on on the topic. Um, we've got such a great relationship with the NHL and have been uh, talking about the possibility of it for quite some time. There's probably not a conversation that goes by between Mr. Vinnick in the NHL and Steve Griggs in the NHL where they aren't bringing it up and uh, put, putting the full court press on them uh, to try to get one here. I think, you know, the long and short of it is, um, you know, the, the relationship with the NHL has been fantastic we've done some great events with them they understand our capabilities here i think they understand what we can do from a marketing standpoint i think they saw in nashville when you put those events in great destinations you have the convergence of both um, visitors and locals that that uh that make for such a special atmosphere so we check a lot of boxes on it i think the one that they've got to continue to get comfortable with is whether we can check the weather box by doing it the right time of year um, our good friends at the Lightning and and uh, the Sports Authority as well, and and so many other community partners have have we've all shared just how we would step up and and make sure it's a big success. But you know, time will tell where the conversation takes us. But it's certainly one we're going to continue 
uh, to engage in as much as possible because it's right at the top of the list when it comes to events that we'd love to get the opportunity to host. Yeah, we want that game here. Uh, an outdoor stadium series game here in Tampa would be electric. I mean, if it's anything like it was in Nashville, Tennessee, you could you could sense the passion because, by the way, Bolt Nation took over like Broadway, Lower Broadway and Nashville. Like there was Bolts Blue everywhere in the city. And it was really cool to see, Rob, because I, I got some feedback as we kind of close out the podcast here from a lot of Nashville Preds fans. They're like, man, I didn't realize just the, the how passionate the, the Lightning fan base is. Like, well, when you went back to back cups, obviously that happens. But they were surprised with the turnout. And I think it would be a very similar turnout in terms of here in Tampa, not just with the locals, but with whichever team, if it was Nashville or another, coming down here to town. It would be awesome and electric to have it here in Tampa. Oh, it would be fantastic. I think we get that same comment when we host Frozen Four, which we've, we're fortunate to have coming back next April. You know, people, I think, are genuinely surprised that, that you can have a warm weather community uh, that may be not traditional for hockey, but have a fan base as passionate as we are, that it's as knowledgeable as we are when it comes to hockey. So it's a, a pretty special thing. And I think to close it out, I think I think you're going to get a little bit of that this week as well with the SEC tournament where people are going to be pleasantly surprised with how our community embraces college basketball uh, as well as is really knowledgeable and appreciative of this opportunity to host such a great event like the SEC men's basketball tournament. It's a nice appetizer to March Madness as things get kicked off this Wednesday at Emily Arena. Again, March 9th through the 13th with the SEC Championship game on the 13th. It'll be broadcast on ESPN. It'll be fun to see that postcard of Tampa Bay plastered nationally for everyone to see just how beautiful, beautiful our hometown is. Good news for you, Rob. By the time that that tournament is over, we should have uh, your white camo joggers in the mail on its way to you. That way you can sport them. You and I can be matching. We can be influencers together. And uh, we'll take a nice little twins photo. What do you say? Yeah, I just encourage the listeners uh, to continue to follow Ryan Bass's Instagram so you can get 12% <laughs> off some sort of camo joggers uh, and so that you can stay hydrated. Uh, guys, it's a big week. Stay hydrated. And we look forward to seeing you on the next Tampa Bay, on the next Game Day Every Day podcast when we cover the Valspar Championship. Let's go, baby. Valspar coming up next weekend. Your boy Chris Young performing as well. Excited for next week's podcast. Hope to see you guys there.